Okay, so for this one, we're going to talk a bit about uh, gradients, controlling gradients, and uh, um, how to analyze uh, gradients. And uh, this will kind of feed into a couple of tutorials that will be coming up soon. Um, and this kind of wraps up our case study projects. But um, this is the building that I've chosen for this. This is the, uh, the Yaz Viseroy Hotel here uh, by Asymptote. Uh, it's got this really nice big screen. Um, looking at it a little bit closer, you can see that there's a kind of a, a diagrid structure that holds these uh, diamond-shaped panels onto it. Okay, so we're going to model a kind of a simplified version of this and uh, use a couple techniques to add um, variation to it and uh, add color to those variations and analyze the difference uh, between those colors. All right, so. Um, you should have now open the sample surface. This is just the kind of front portion of the building. And you should also, if everything installed properly, you should also be seeing the lunchbox tab. It looks like this. Okay. And uh, there should be no problem with that. If there is any issues, let us know. All right, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get right into it here. Um, I'm going to grab, first thing we wanna do is, first of all, draw our diamond shape panels. Um, lunchbox has a really, Simple way of doing this with this diamond panel component here under the panels tab. So go ahead and grab that. Um, you can turn off the preview of the original surface. And what we need to do, this is obviously a very coarse version of our surface because these values are still pretty small. So we're going to update that. Um, I'm gonna, just through trial and error, I found that 160 into the U and uh, around 16 into the V gives us a pretty good, uh, gives us a proportion that I think is kind of similar to the building itself. Okay. All right, and um, now what we want to do is start extracting enough information from these diamond panels to begin uh, setting ourselves up for the next, for the rotations and for the scaling. Uh, so what we're going to do is, first of all, find the center point for all of them. So I'm going to go to surface. We can leave that on for a second. And uh, so here's the um, basically the, uh, the area component is going to give us a, a couple of uh, centroids of these diamond panels. And we're going to ignore the triangular panels. Uh, we'll turn this off in just a second. So we're only going to work from the diamonds, the triangles we don't need. Uh, just as a note. And then I'm going to head stay in surface and I'm going to grab two more things. I'm going to grab the surface closest point command and I'm going to grab the evaluate surface command. Okay. And the point that I'm going to bring to the surface is that centroid. And then I'm going to analyze uh, the diamonds themselves go into the S input. The diamonds themselves also go into the S input of the other component, but the UV point here, the UV parameter of those. Um, the points that we just pulled to the surface are going to head into that component. And what that gives us, this little trickery here, gives us a frame that we can use to um, uh, that we're going to need to uh, to make them all planar. Because currently these these diamonds, although they look like they might be flat, uh, are not. Many of them are not, and we're going to have to make make it so. I'm also going to turn this off. Oh, by the way, if you're seeing uh, if you're seeing a preview of these planes that is really huge go to display plane size and turn it down so if for example if yours looks like if yours looks like this you know that could get a little distracting so we can turn it down so display preview plane size and uh, I usually leave mine at around a quarter of the default setting okay cool and uh, before we move forward I'm gonna give ourselves at least a I'm going to draw out the, using the diamond edges, I'm going to draw out our center lines of the, the main structural component. So I'm going to go to surface and this little guy here, this B-Rep edges component, I'm just going to plug that in. And uh, then I'm just going to grab, I'm going to turn it off for now because I want to change its color. So I'm going to display custom preview and, uh, and then I'll head back to parameters and grab a color swatch and just, yeah. And I'm going to leave that alone. So now I got a kind of a wireframe of the of the panels. I got my frames here. This is my next step. 
and I'm off. I'm off and running. The first thing I want to do is add a little bit of a scaling to. Uh, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I want to scale these panels a little bit so that there's some breathing room for where the structure might go, and so that the panels don't interact with one another. They don't. They don't hit uh, as I rotate them. So I'm going to go to translate, affine, scale, and we're going to scale those diamonds. And by default, it's going to just kind of scale it down toward the center. Uh, we need to update the center of our scaling, which is actually going to be the um, the points coming out of this here. Okay. And then we can turn these components off. We don't have to see that anymore. And I'm going to grab a slider between 0 and 1 and just plug it into the F input here, just to kind of give you a sense for what's happening. Um, a scaling factor of 1 is going to be 100% of the size, so there's no scaling. And anything lower than that or higher than that will scale it accordingly. So here, if you go all the way to down to 0, of course, it deletes it. Um, so we want to keep that you know, within within the range of uh, just over zero and between Z and one in this case. Uh, we're going to replace this in, in, in a step or two ahead. But uh, for now, I just want to kind of leave it at, you know, something around 0.8 or something, just so that I know that that step has been completed and it's ready for a future phase. OK, and um, before we start doing all of our, our gradient rotation, setting our angles and that sort of thing. Um, we need to make sure that these are planar because we're, we're, mo we're modeling glass surfaces. So let's start on that. Let's go to surface and we're going to take this, these scaled versions apart, the versions of the, the diamonds that we now have. I could turn off that preview, leaving this one on. And uh, the vertices I'm just going to bring out into a parameter. So I'm going to go to parameter tab, grab that little X there, turn this off for a second. And um, the next thing is going to be to project these points onto these frames, because these frames I know are planar. A uh, frame by default uh, is can only really refer to one uh, plane in space at whatever orientation that you give it. And in this case, it's oriented along the normal direction or the perpendicular direction from all the points that we drew uh, in this step here, okay? So if we visualize that for a second um, and go back, this is the plane that we're going to project all those points onto in sets of four. And that's how these are already organized for us, which is perfect. Um, one step before we do that is to take this component. See, these here, you can see uh, if we just kind of hover over it, the data structure, there's uh, a bunch of lists on the left. And that each there's 1,192 of them because that's how many panels I have. That's how many diamonds I have. And then there are four vertices for each one. We need to match that structure so that we're only applying the four vertices to the plane that relates to it. So I'm going to right click on this F output here, and I'm going to graft that, right, the upward arrow. And then I'm going to go over to translate affine once again and find the project component. The geometry I'm projecting are the points. And what I'm projecting it onto is the frames. And you're going to see a, a very, very um, subtle change. Uh, you're not going to actually really notice it by the naked eye. There's, there's, unless you go up to the front here, and then you might notice it. But really, all we've done is we've made sure that the four vertices that are relative to each one of the diamond shaped panels are now existing along the same plane as one another. Um, and we can now use these four vertices to redraw our surfaces as planar surfaces as opposed to twisted ones. So I'm going to go to Sets and List Item and zoom in and add a few outputs like we, we're getting probably getting used to doing by now, I hope. And then what we're going to do is just go over to Surface, four-point surface, and just connect across. Should be OK. Yep, there we go. All right, so what we've done, yeah, there we go. So we've redrawn all of the diamond shape panels to be planar. And we now have a, um, a start at uh, developing these, the facade in the way that we want. OK, we're going to do two things here. We're going we're gonna to apply a rotation transformation to these, and we're going to apply a scaling. But we're going to do one thing at a time. All right, so the first thing is going to be to do some rotation. Give myself a little room over here. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to deal with these. We don't have to deal with this data structure anymore. We can actually flatten this down. So I'm going to right click on that and flatten it. So now we're dealing with just a bunch of, you know, a single list of, of components here. And uh, we're going to um, go to sets and deconstruct them. What I'm going to do next is I need an axis of rotation. I need to find a line unique to each one of these panels individually that I can use to rotate again, you know, along. You know, I can't rotate, for example, this panel in the same way that I rotate that panel, right? They need to be rotated individually, and I need an axis. So each one of these panels will have to have a custom axis. So I'm going to draw a line physically from the top point to the bottom point of each one of them. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start doing. So to do that, I need, to, I need the points. I can't draw a line without points. So we'll go to set, and we'll, we'll extract those four points, kind of like what we just did before. And um, I'm going to go to curve endpoints, and we're going to figure out which of these we need to connect. That's going to be the horizontal, so it looks like it's going to be one to three. And that's going to be our vertical. So if I turn that off and this off, you'll see it more clearly. There's all of my rotation axes. We're drawing them between the top and bottom points of each one of the panels individually. All right. I can then flatten this again as well because I want later for this to match up to these. And let's go ahead and start that process. So we'll go over to Transform and Euclidean and Rotate 3D. Okay, so we want to rotate these things 3D. First thing I'm going to do is swap out the angles, right? So right click A, turn it to degrees. We'll get to that in a second. The axis is our lines, the geometry are the surfaces. You can turn the lines off. And the center can come from uh, it can come from all the way back. You know, you can get it back from this point if you like, but I think what I'll do is I'll just grab it from just to show you another way to do it. Just uh, I'm going to go to curve, grab this little point on curve component here, find the center point of that, and we'll let that be the center. All right, and we could disable the preview there. And now nothing is really happening because we we only have a we have a very small degrees in here. So let's just go ahead and grab a double click in here, type in something like 90, give us a slider that we can play with so that we can start seeing how things are working. Great. So you should be seeing us now rotating all of those panels to 90 degrees all together. All right. Now we're going to want, uh, now this is, there's no gradient effect in here yet. Um, they're all being rotated to the same degree. Uh, we're going to we're going to change that. So we're going to leave that alone for now and then swap that out later. So the first thing we can do, and this goes back to some earlier exercises, first thing I'll do uh, to make a change there, and you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this down actually because uh, I'm going to start working down here to add some stuff. Okay, And that I'll replace. Um, Let's give this thing a range of rotation angles instead of working off of just one. All right, so let's go over to uh, math, and we'll construct a domain. And this is going to set the maximum and minimum rotation angle. Okay, so let's go to parameter, grab a couple panels, or just one actually. And I'll double click in there, and we'll make it something like 45. And we'll put that into B first, and then I'll right-click on A, set an expression to negative X, and then plug in 45 again. So what I have in the end here is a domain between negative 45 and 45, and that will become clear in just a second. And then we're going to go to sets and fire that thing through a, a range. All right, so we're going to develop a range of numbers equally divided between that dom between the bounds of that domain. So we can plug that in there. Now the question is, how many things do we need? Uh, how many numbers do we need? We need as many numbers as we have objects that we're rotating. So let's do a measuring of that. So let's go over to sets list length. And we can measure how many, um, how many surfaces we have. Plug that into n. 
but we have to remember that when we're working with domains, we do have to uh, subtract that number by one. So I'm going to right click on that end, go over to expression and just say X minus one, commit those changes. And now the number of things I have here should match um, 792. Yes, should match the number of things that I've got here. Okay, so now what we can do is plug that in and replace that slider. And what we should be seeing, uh, now this depends entirely on the organization of the panels themselves. And the panels are organized uh, just the way that Lunchbox did it and Grasshopper set them up. Um, they should be organized, uh, I guess, horizontally. And what we're seeing is the maximum angles are being applied to the two ends of the surface. And when it turns into around around zero, between 45 and negative 45 is when they're around here. So the effect is that up in the front here, there's very little or zero rotation at all. And as we gradually move back toward the end, it increases in rotation. The nice thing, too, is that because we've got a negative to a, um, a positive, um, they're all facing outward, right? So if I look at it from the front back, the panels are facing me. And if I rotate around, it's the same condition. Um, if we did something instead like this, you can go ahead and, and follow along here. I'm going to delete that expression, grab another one of these, just delete, you know, copy and paste that, throw a zero in there and replace that A input, and then um, make that the domain. What we'll now see is that on one side, they're all facing the front, but on this side, uh, actually, we're losing some of that rotation there. Okay, that's, ah, okay, interesting. Well, yeah, we're actually losing, the domain is not large enough for it to go all the way around the surface. So I guess that's how it's organized from one end to the other. And we're getting the kind of, all the zeros happening over here and the in between that happening over here. Um, so one thing we can do is just go 45 to 45. And what we'll probably see now uh, is again another another change there yeah so now we're kind of looking through the uh, the structure and looking uh, through it there uh, looking at them here okay so you know um, depending on how these uh, the original uh, panels are organized you get totally different uh, results here so you shouldn't become discouraged if, 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 if you're starting to experiment a bit and you're not getting the results you want. It doesn't necessarily mean you've done something wrong here. It just means you may need to reorganize the panels. Okay, but for this, uh, for, for, the, for this exercise, we'll go with what we did first, which is the negative 45 to 45, and use that as one of our, one of our examples here because it's pretty cleanly organized. And just to keep things clean, I'm just going to delete that um, so we don't get confused later. And um, while we have one working, let's start to set up our, our uh, coloration, the kind of analysis of these angles. All right. And I'm going to go over to parameters, input, gradient. I'll grab this gradient thing here. All right. And um, you can right click on that and set a different preset. And maybe for this one, we could set a preset. You can set whatever preset. Um, here's one of the custom ones that I've made, um, but you don't have that. So what I'm going to do is show you how to make that. Um, you can click a preset. Let's see which one would be a good one here. Uh, hang on. Yeah, this would be a good one because it has three, three dots. Uh, and then what you do is you want to right click on each one of those dots, and this should pop up. And we can make some changes to the colors here. Uh, you can go ahead and pick whatever colors you like. I'm going to try to mimic the one that I had before. You can also change the uh, alpha value, so if you drop that down, it'll be a little bit transparent. So I'm going to make things that are kind of, that look good together, you know, like pinks to blues maybe, or whatever you like. And drop this opacity down a bit, and then I'm going to try to copy that one. So it's 198, 86, 255. Okay, fair enough. 186, let's see, 198, 86, there we go, 198, 86, so we'll drop that down, get it close enough, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, and then this goes 255, 
and then we'll drop that opacity a little bit there like that cool all right and the reason why I want that to look the same as the front um, you know the front and back of this to be the same is because we've got a we don't really want to make a huge distinction between negative values here we've got a range that starts with the same number one being negative and the other being positive but we want you know the the amount of rotation to become clear not necessarily where the fact that it had to go in a certain direction in order to do it okay so the um, I'm also gonna grab so I'm gonna go to parameters I'm gonna go to number I'm gonna pop this in here this is gonna be the the set of values we're putting color to and now we just gotta tell it what the max and min is okay so we can go to math min max which is our bounds component and then we can deconstruct that under domain here deconstruct and then our start and end can go straight in we'll go to display grab a custom previewer sorry uh, we can turn off the preview of the actual panels themselves and replay and plug in uh, the shader into the M input there and now what you're seeing is a uh, basically a, a quick visual uh, if you will description of the rotation angles just from max and min all we can say here it's is that the, the, the more purple or pink that we get it the higher the rotation the more blue the lower the rotation right and that's a kind of a helpful abstraction when it comes to analyzing the work and demonstrating it through drawings you can change your presets uh, but before we do that you can save this one so go to presets and add current gradient and then you can select it later uh, so it's down here now so if I make a change you know to this or something I don't necessarily have to worry about not getting it back okay um, but again uh, for what we're doing we want a kind of double-sided uh, gradient because that makes a lot more sense based on the data that we were putting into this all right and we'll sit on that for a second we're gonna add one more thing to this which is a scaling factor all right so and we already have that actually we've got the scaling factor here all we gotta do is update this slider and replace it with something new and for this one I'm gonna show you how to set up a basic attractor uh, um, relationship so we're gonna put a couple points in Rhino bring them into Grasshopper measure how far those points are from all the center points of these panels and use that as a way to determine how big and how small the panels are so the closer the panels are the smaller they'll become and the farther away the panels are from the from the two points uh, the larger the panels will, will remain okay all right and um, to keep myself kind of clear here I'm gonna I know that I want to be using these points so I'm going to just pull one of these out so I can always find it later and then uh, in Rhino go ahead and, and throw a point in so just draw a point somewhere maybe over here doesn't matter where somewhere where you can find it and then let's go to parameters in Grasshopper grab that little point parameter right click on it set that point and uh, and now it's in okay the other thing I want you to do is right click on it again and internalize that data down here so now if I delete it in Rhino there's no consequence to that I can get rid of it and it's still set in Grasshopper so that if I save this file without saving the Rhino file I don't lose all my work or I don't at least lose you know this part of the work okay so we're going to internalize that and when we do that the little gumball pops up and that allows us to move things around on screen here interactively okay so that's also pretty helpful in the next phase all right so let's measure the distances so that we can get some data on these scaling factors here all right so what we're going to do for that is go over to vector point and closest point the, uh, the point from Rhino is going to head into the C input here this time, and then the points that we're going to measure against are the, uh, the ones that we brought out of the evaluate component over here. All right. And what's nice is it's going to give us a whole bunch of distances over here out of this output, and we're going to use those distances to set a scaling factor, but if you look, you know, all those numbers are, of course, higher than, much higher than 1, which means if we just plug that in directly, we're going to have a problem. Uh, all these all these uh, diamonds are going to get huge 
so instead of dividing it and shortening it down, what we're going to do is, is simply remap these values to, to fit them within a different domain. We want to keep their kind of, let's say, proportional relationships, you know, because that's what sets our gradient. But we want to fit them into a, a smaller range. So we'll go back to math. Um, we need to figure out what the, mac, the, the boundaries are so we can grab that max and min again, plug that in here. Uh, I'm going to give myself a little more workspace, so I'm going to move this back up to just a bit. And then uh, back over in the same tab, math, domain, remap is the next component. So remap numbers is a very handy, handy component. So the data that we're affecting is the original data, the distance data. The S input is, is the boundaries uh, or the bounds of that data. And then we're going to construct a new domain. to fit all that stuff into. And we're going to make it between 0 0.5, which is like a 50% scaling, and a 9, uh, sorry, a 0 0.95. It's kind of a 95% scaling. And that's going to be our target domain. Now this R, once this is complete, can replace that original slider that we had in our in our scalar, in our scaling uh, component. Now, as you can see, um, the size of these panels is going to change based on the location of this point in, in, in on screen. So, if I move this thing around, they're going to become smaller and larger. It's not changing the color just yet, okay? Because it's not related yet, and we can get to that in a second. And we can also decide whether or not we want it to be related. And it's not changing the rotations either. The rotations are a hard, basically at this point, a kind of a hard parameter. They're, they're set using this thing here, which is a pretty hard parameter. It's not something that, it's not something set with a slider. It's not something that's going to update with the movement of this point just yet. But we're going to experiment in the next couple uh, minutes how we might relate all these things together. But here we've got something kind of nice happening. We're, we've got a scaling effect from one relationship between the panels themselves and the location of this point, and we also have a gradient in the rotations, which is set with this hard numeric parameter. Okay. Now, while those two things are separate, what I'll do is um, we'll talk about a way that we can quickly cycle between the two different visualizations of those of those things. Uh, so we're going to copy and paste this. We're going to change its preset to something else. And I'm going to use the green to red, or uh, you know what? Yeah, okay, that's fine. We can update this stuff later. And you can make any kind of custom changes you would like to this. Uh, I'm just going to go into these and just kind of change their opacity a little bit. I kind of, I think it reads a little bit better while I'm working, you know. But I'll leave the colors alone. All right, and we have to input a different data set into this, which is actually this stuff over here. Okay, so I'm going to expand that just a touch so you can see what's going on here. Uh, this information goes in there, and everything should be able, should be okay from there. Let me make sure. Yeah. Um, the last thing we got to do here is, is be able to quickly cycle in be between the two, uh, the two options, you know. And let me just make sure I, I'm getting what I want out of this. Here, uh, in this case, further away we go, the more red it is. But I don't know that that makes a lot of sense. You know, like, because actually what we're showing is the scaling. And if the scaling is more extreme, maybe that should be a more extreme color instead of green. So all we got to do in this case is swap the start and end to just simply change the um, basically the visualization here. So the more something has been scaled, the smaller it gets, the redder it gets. And that might be something that we'd like to make clear. You know, It's been changed the most from its original size, and therefore we should know about that. And these green ones over here are changed the least. Now how do we, let's figure out a way to cycle between these without having to disconnect anything. So let's go to vector, I'm sorry, set, list, and pick and choose, all right? And um, before we do anything else, there's something we need to do. This is not always the case with this component. It just depends on what you're putting into it. In this case, because we're putting in a big range of, of, uh, of values, we have to graft each of these inputs. All right, so right-click and, and do that. 
And then go over to the parameter input and boolean toggle, grab one of these toggle switches. And that can be double clicked and changed. Now anything coming into zero is going to come out when this is false and anything coming into one will come out of here when it's true. The last thing we have to do is, is just simply flatten this so that it matches up the data stream coming in to the custom previewer. So now as you can see as I've updated that um, it went back to our original but if I double click now I can say here's here's what we're looking at in terms of the, the scaling gradient here's what we're looking at in terms of the rotation gradient. They don't have to be the same color because they're expressing two different things. And because the, the what affects them is not related, it's probably smart not to have them as the same color. Um, but while we have this working, this is kind of the end of phase one, uh, let's work on a way that we can make everything interconnected. So how is it that this point in space could also affect not only the scaling but also the rotation angles? All right, so we'll do that next. Now, now one thing that we did here, you know, we, we remap these, these distances to fit an appropriate range of scaling factors between 0 and 1. We can't just simply use these numbers again because these are really small, and it's going to be that these angles are too small to even recognize, right? So what we need to do, if we want to uh, have the option to have the point affect the scale and the rotation, is I'm going to move this up because we want to save this as its own thing. So I'm going to set this as like, uh, you know, we'll just call it static rotation angles, um, meaning that they don't change, you know, or at least they don't update. And then we're going to do a little bit of work back over here. Um, okay, so let's before we do that, let's set up a new domain. Um, we're not going to reuse this one. We're going to set up a new one for this. So we're going to go to set, oops, math, construct domain. Alrighty. And in this case, I am going to go between, let's say, 0 and 60 or something. Okay, so I'm going to go with 0. Copy and paste that and just 60, we'll say. All right, and now that's a, an overall positive thing. Uh, no negative values like we did up here, just to give you a different option. Um, and we're going to use this as a domain to remap the values coming out of here. Now, two different ways to do this. You could either, you can remap the remap, or you can remap these these directly. It, it, I actually don't think it matters. So what I'll do um, is just grab another remap component, and we'll see what happens if we remap these values. The source domain is going to be the same thing that we plugged in before. So that one, we can sh we can reuse that. All right. But now we've set up a new range uh, to smash all those numbers into, to fit them all into, I should say. And we can now replace a couple different things. Um, we can replace, first of all, the rotation angles. That'll update on screen. But we also need to update what we're visualizing, okay, the colors. And in this case, because both parameter sets are, you know, the, the scaling and the rotation are being affected by the same input, because of that, we don't actually need this anymore. But I'm not going to delete it because I want to be able to go back. But if this is set to false, this has given us all the visualization we need. Right, and let's 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 talk about why that's true. Right, so let's move this point around, and you can see that not only are things changing in terms of their color, they're changing in terms of their scale, and they should be also updating their rotations. So let's zoom in, and what we should be seeing is a rotation angle change as we move, in addition to the, the size of it. Yeah, so it's starting to rotate less, and then also gets a little bit smaller. It's a little tough to see. Um, maybe we could look at it in plan. Maybe that'll be a little easier. Try to focus in on those back. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, if you look at the back um, panels. As I move this away, you can see them start to rotate a little bit more. All right. So now we're, we're proving that everything is interconnected. So now in this case, the color analysis has to do with um, a lot of different things. It's showing us the relationship between the size, the rotation, 
um, yeah, both of those things actually. It's showing us the relationship between the size and rotation. So now they're, and, and both of those things are coming from the same input. All right. Whereas before we had a separate input affecting change in a different way. Okay, so hopefully that starts to make a little bit of sense here. Now, for the sake of this exercise, I kind of like that they're separate. So I'm going to, I just wanted to show you that you can inter interrelate, you know, these things. And um, I'm going to go back here and update this. I kind of like being able to cycle back and forth, kind of digging that. And I'm going to leave this one on for a moment. Um, yeah, okay, everything is up to date there. I'm going to move this. And what we're going to do is keep ourselves organized. We're going to put a little box around this one too, and we're going to say dynamic rotation angles. Right, and then we know that when we replace these two inputs, that's what we're seeing. And we know that when we're looking like this, we're seeing these. Okay. So we're good there. And the last thing I want to show you is that you can you can use more than one point using this handy component here. You can input as many points as you'd like in here, and it will it will make changes you know uh, to the pattern as well. So I'm going to visualize that one, which is the scalars the scaling uh, effect. I'm going to draw another point here in Rhino somewhere, doesn't matter. Select it, go to parameters, grab one of the points, right click, set point. And right click again, internalize. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to go to set, tree, merge, and just bring these two together into one, into one set. You could turn them on and off as you please. Uh, I guess I'll turn it on. And then I'm going to just replace that there. Okay. Um, and now what we've seen, you know, is an update to the to the pad, the color pattern. And if I click, alrighty. Oh yeah, I guess you do have to have these on. Yeah, sorry, you have to have the preview on to see the gumball. So I'll turn that on, leave it on. And as I move this one around, uh, the scale of the panels will update and their color will update as well. And if we want to make them even a little smaller to make this more extreme, you can update that value. That'll that'll really show you the difference there. Okay. Let's bring that a little closer. Get some more red in there. All right. So again, two different gradients uh, happening simultaneously here, and we're able to cycle between the two. And the cool thing is that because the rotations are based and they're reliant on the scaling, uh, by cycling through these, I'm not changing any geometry. I'm just simply changing what I'm showing. All right. And then from here, it'd be up to you to explain that using a diagram or using, you know, of course, a key um, to the images so that you can be um, be clear about what the difference is between these two things in terms of an analytical approach. Okay, so again, that sets us up a little bit for next steps when we talk about some basic environmental analysis. Um, um, but at this point, we are, uh, this should wrap up our exercise for this case study.